Turn to page 502, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. 
place to stand in his promises. Because his promises is sure, steadfast, and always available. <coughs> Take your Bible and turn it to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, and we're going to go to chapter number 8. We're going to kind of bring to a close the journey, 40 year journey of the nation of Israel through the wilderness. And we will finish up this morning on the last time that God provided for them manna. It's getting ready to stop. They're going into the promised land, and so they're going to get a new diet. There's plenty of milk and honey in the land of promise. So, in the book of Deuteronomy, we're going to look at, start with <coughs> chapter 8, verse number 1, read down to about four verses, and uh, well, I want to, this title of this message this morning, Call to Remember. Call to Remember. And Moses is going to bring the children of Israel up to a kind of a count, uh, let them know some things here. So let's look at this. The Bible says in verse 1 of chapter 8 in Deuteronomy, all the commandments which I commanded thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep the commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord that man live. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Father, bless the reading of your word, and bless and help me, our Father, to bring the message just like you want it done. Lord, we love you, we thank you. We thank you for your promises to us today as we are surely on our journey from the beginning of our salvation until the day that we meet you in glory. So Father, we ask you to bless them and we'll praise you for what you do in Christ's name. Amen. As we look here in this portion of the Word of God, I want us to think about that thought and I kind of take it from verse number two because he said in verse number two, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. He said, I want you to call to your remembrance, your, your mind, amen? And so as we look at this, he tells us in verse number one, he said, all the commandments which I commanded thee, this day shall you observe to do, that you may live and multiply, and that you may go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. That land was promised to the nation of Israel many, many, many moons ago. If you remember all the way back in the book of Genesis chapter number 12, God promised Abraham the land of Canaan and told him that his seed would occupy that property forever. So they're going to go in and do that. And so here we find uh, uh, that the Lord is, is speaking to Moses and he's telling them to, uh, to remember. And he said the commandments. I want you to notice what he said. I want you to remember all the commandments which I command thee this day. <clears throat> the key is that ye shall live and, no, I'm, I'm going to 
too far. The commandments, he said, that I shall uh, be this day, shall ye observe to do. It's about to get ahead of myself. You know, that's a key in our life. We, we, we deal with our children about what you're learning and getting them to understand some things about life, uh, how to live. They go to school to learn some things. But you know, it doesn't make any difference how much teaching they get if they don't remember and then keep and do what they learn. I suppose they own the backyard, amen? <laughs> So here, Moses is really putting this thing down. He said, not the ones you want to. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall be, shall ye observe to do. And boy, that's a, that's a key even with us here at the church today. You said, I don't live under commandments. You live under the word of God if you're a Christian. And God is laying down how we're to walk with him. How we're to live our life. Where we're to go and not go. There's a lot of things we got to take a good long look at as we we're walking in this journey. Amen? Amen. I thought about Israel. Forty years they journeyed in the wilderness. Why? And I'll probably, I might get to this later, but I'll kind of throw it in right now while I'm thinking. They had spent many, many years in Egypt. Generation after generation after generation. To the point that they had lost connection with God because of the idolatry in Egypt. So he's reinstating during his 40 years of wilderness this God that their forefathers had served. As a matter of fact, let me just pitch this in. 400 years they were in the land of Egypt. I was going to need to get that in a while. Sometimes I got to say now because I'll forget it. Amen. <laughs> so 400 years they had been more or less exiled from God into a pagan society. Not how long America's been running. Amen. That's right. So everybody over here since uh, this thing started till now in just over 400 years. <clears throat> and there's been a lot of paganism. A lot of new junk introduced in this period of time. But God gives us his word. Church, we don't, we, we, we don't run off of what D.C. says. Washington, D.C. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. You don't even live your life as a Christian life. What you run is a student house. You learn how to walk with God from the precious word of God. That's right. The commandments, the word that God lays out here. So he, he's telling them. He, told, he tells them this in, in this chapter number 8. And I was looking back, and the Bible tells us in chapter number 4, as they came into the land, guess what? He's talking to them over there. The Bible's giving some charges, and here he says in verse number 1 of chapter 4, he said, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers given you. Now this verse 2 is really important. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Amen. Don't be taking things out of the word of God. Don't adjunct to the word of God. Take it as it is written. That's right. That's what's wrong with the, with the world today. Come on. And even in America, people want to change the word of God. Uh, come on I'm now. I better hitch on it. No, you don't. You need to forget that and stick to the word of God. I'll tell you what. That, this thing is so important. And so Moses is really laying this down to them here in this chapter, chapter number 8. And you look here at, in, in verse number 2. He said, And thou shalt remember, remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years of the wilderness. Think about what you have gone through. How many people have died in that wilderness? What you have been taught and instructed by God. Why did that all have to happen? 
Well, he says it real plainly. He said he brought you that way to humble you, to humble thee, and to prove thee. For what reason? He said that you may know what is in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Listen, you know, we go through trials, we go through struggles in our life, and we look around sometimes and we wish we wouldn't have to face this stuff. Well, did you ever stop to think maybe you're going through a situation God is wanting to humble you or prove you? We just want to cry about it. <laughs> Amen. That's our nature. I don't want to go through this. God says, I should go through it. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. You need, listen folks, he didn't spend 40 years. They could have been there in a couple, three weeks if they had just left and went straight over there. It wouldn't have took them no time. Maybe a month ago, I don't know. I didn't figure that out before I'm telling you. But what I'm trying to say is, it would not have took 40 years if they'd have been on page one with God. That's right. What, what page one? Listen and do it. <laughs> Amen. I know some of you raised your kids and some of you are in the process. Boy, I tell you what, a lot of times I've done it a long time ago. You get to wish your kids would just listen and shut up and listen and then just do what you say. Amen. Sure, we make your money lunch movie. <laughs> right. Amen. That's what God's saying to his people. He said that to you this morning. Just listen to what I say and do it, and you'll find out the trip will be a lot easier. That's right. <laughs> It'll be a lot smoother. Amen. I thought about that. What, what did he want to humble? He, he wanted to take some of that pride out of their life. Uh -huh. You know, people see that with pride. Amen. I would have been more amen. Then. But uh, we are. I, I, you know, I've got my way. Yeah, I know it. It ain't no good. We've got to do it God's way. That's right. But he wanted to humble them, to take the pride out of their life. What did he say? He said, I want to prove. He did this to prove you. Let me tell you something. There was a whole lot of people that went out of Egypt with the Jewish people that weren't Jews. The Bible said a big mixed multitude. That's right. right. You know what? That mixed multitude had to die in that desert because they would not humble themselves and he had no way to prove them of being what God wanted them to be. Could they have made it? Sure they could. They could have done it. By saying whatever God says them Jews are doing, we're going to do it too. I could go further, but I'm not going to. He had he had to, in a sense, he had to break them from what they had learned all the years they had lived in Egypt. You got to come out of that. You know what a lot of people think get along in church? They're not willing to lay aside the past as a sinner and start trying to live like a Christian. <clears throat> Did you hear? So they cause problems. Preacher preached too long. They didn't sing the song this morning. I like. I ain't coming back. <laughs> what is that all about? So here he's saying, God said 40 years. <laughs> Look at that. God led the 40, these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to prove you. What for? Look at that next phrase. To, sit, to know what was in thine heart. I'm going to tell you something. God had to do a real work of grace in these people's heart to get them up and willing to say, if God's man says it, and God's speaking to this man to lead us, we're going to follow him. And it's not a bad thing if he's a man of God and he's got close contact with God. Moses had, he had God and him, Moses was running on the same page, amen? So he, he did that to prove them, to see, to know what was in their heart. Now, look at this next phrase. I'm going to kind of go slow here. He says, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. He said he's got to prove you, he's got to humble you, 
He's got to see what's in your heart to see whether or not you're going to keep God's word. So he did that to Israel. He kept them out in that desert all that length of time. Not just, I don't know how to say this, really, just the common folks. But see, there was a bunch of people that had been appointed to help Moses to take care of them. Hey, there was a bunch of people came out of Egypt. Did you know that? Now, if I, tell, if I want to turn back over to Exodus chapter 18 and verse 17, I, I can show you where Moses' father-in-law saw that multitude of people and, and the people was coming to Moses trying to get some help and some instruction and they were wearing him out. So he said, you know what, Moses? You can't handle all this. You need some helpers. And so he had Moses to put a man over work. 150 and 25 and on down the line. And that's kind of like the church. Preacher can't do everything. So he has some deacons. Amen. Well, most people got your head down. You ain't even looking at me. <laughs> hey, I'm glad I'm not dealing with a thousand people or even 150 people. <laughs> I have to have 25 deacons to help me. But anyhow, see, God, and that man had some sense. And God did not say, no, Moses is going to do it all. No. He set up those helpers. Mm -hmm. You get in the New Testament, the book of Acts, those apostles, what did they do? They appointed some helpers. You remember that? Deacons. <laughs> Why? They needed help taking care of the people. So folks, listen. He, he, was, he was laying this thing out. He said he had to humble them. He had to prove them. He had to know what was in their heart. Is your heart going to follow the leadership of Almighty God that's handed down to the leader that God has put in your way? He's got to know that. So much. I, I've done a little bit of looking. I'm, I'm not going to tell you to run over there, but I was looking over here in the book of Job. <laughs> I was looking at Job in, in chapter number uh, 23. And here's what this says in verse number 10. He says, But he knoweth the way <coughs> that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Yes. My foot hath held his step. His way have I kept and not declined. He said, neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessity food. Job said, I am going to walk with God, and when he is through with me, I will come forth as gold. And my foot hath he held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. So I, I, I was kind of looking some things up, and I thought, that's, that's some good advice for all of us. Me included. He knoweth the way that I take. He knows where I'm at. He knows where you're at. And when he had tried me, he said, I'm going to come forth like go. Amen. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Don't never think you're going to get through this life, even as a Christian, without going through some trials, going through some tests. You're going to do it. But how are you going to come out on the other side? You're going to come out like gold if you keep the word of God. That's right. And he says that right there in that, in that, in that verse. Amen. I mean, he says, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words, W-R-D-S, of his mouth more than my necessary food. Well, you know what? I, church, I'm going to tell you something. That's what the church of God's got to do today. That's what we as God's people have got to realize. There, this book is more important and more precious and more needed than the food that we're eating. That's right. We've got to have it. If we're going to walk to please God, if we're going to exalt the one who loved us and died for us some 2,000 years ago on a road like a cross, we've got to know his word. We've got right. to keep his word and we've got to walk by his direction. He tells us over here in the scriptures that I read, look down at that next verse, 
Verse 3, he said, He humbled thee, he suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Boy, we get to thank God. I've got to have plenty of that good food. Amen. And you know how we are. First thing comes out, I want fry bread, soft bread, try to hug it, all that fish and all that stuff. Amen. But you can't find it no more. That's done out of the picture. <laughs> Why? Old folks have died. Man, when I first went to Little Cool Eater, listen. All of them had it. But there was a couple of camps. We had five camp houses. And there was a couple of them. I always really enjoyed going over there. Well, there's three, really. My mother's first cousin, uh, she, had, she did it too. But Aunt Ella, uh, she wasn't Ella. She wasn't my aunt, but uh, I called her Aunt Ella. I mean, she, she, I went there, I was green as grass and bigger as bigger can be. But she really took to me, amen? And, uh, but anyhow, I'd like to go to her camp. And I'd, like to, I'd like to go to Kobe, Kobe Deer. I like to go to her camp. That's my mother's first cousin. Then I like to come to our family camp, which is number one. Then they turned out to be. <laughs> Especially on four Sundays and four supper Sundays. Yeah, right. Because we had to be yeah, 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 yeah. every Sunday. I'd love to do that. But you know what? As good as all that stuff was, it never surpassed this book. That's right. This, man, this is the best right here. So that's what, that's what the uh, Moses, he's, he's, he's telling these people, listen, he said, uh, God kept you out there in that wilderness for 40 years. <coughs> he had to get you ready to get into the homeland, get, to get into Canaan, the land that flowed with milk and honey. Well, I stopped and thought about that right quick. Well, he's already kept me down here in this wilderness <laughs> since I've been saved and walking with him over 50 years. I might be getting pretty close to it. Graduating from home, amen. That'll be all right. That's fine with me. Folks, listen. This land is a wilderness. This land, we are faced with many, many oppositions. We are faced with the enemy on every turn. If you if you think they weren't up there, I would, I would look, look look on down here. Look at look down to verse number 15 of that chapter. Chapter number eight. He said, "Who led thee, these? Uh, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water? Who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint?" Verse sixteen says, "Who fed thee in the wilderness manna, which thy fathers knew not?" That he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at the latter end. He, he lets them know. You've come through this thing. You're on this side of that wilderness. You're preparing to go into the land of promise, into Canaan. I'm going to tell you what, a lot of us older, we're going to cross over to the Lord, we're going to the other side. We're going to leave this wilderness journey we've been in and we're going to go to heaven we're going to go to a better place we're going to go to an eternal place and i'll tell you what we'll be there with the lord Amen. that will be the glory of all of our trip all of the things that we have found in this life all of the suffering we may have experienced through health and through disease and through sickness and even maybe Short on to power, you know, and all that stuff, you know. We didn't have what we really would like to have in our hip pocket. But you know what? God brought us through. God stood with us. And he, he's, he's going to take us through this thing, through our journey. We're on a journey, church. Some of you have, have been on this thing too awful long. You're young. You're young in the Lord. And you're young on the journey. But some of us are not. We're older. But we're on a journey, and I kept ever as I read and studied this whole thing that I've been preaching over the last few weeks, I keep thinking about us as a church. We are the people of God. We are those who are journeying.
from the wilderness, from sinfulness, from a life that was on in destruction. We've got on our way and we're headed for the promised land, so to speak. We're going to heaven. But we're not exempt from problems. Man, he said he led you through a land where there was fiery scorpions, <coughs> serpents and scorpions and drought and all kinds of things. And he did it so that you would come to the point to realize you was not the man. You was not the woman that could handle it. You had to depend upon God to get you through. That's right. He says that. He says in that verse number two, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. In chapter number, and in verse number three says that he brought you through all of this stuff. He said, why? That you might know that uh, we do not live by bread alone, there in, in that verse number three, that he might make thee know that thou, that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Listen, our spiritual life desperately depends upon every word of God. We've got to have it. It's, it's nourishment for our soul. It's strength for our journey. And we've got to know the Word of God. We've got to do that. You've got to remember, we're, we're not on the playground, we're on a battleground. You, you're, you're, not, you're not out here tiptoeing through the roses and the flowers. You're coming through the serpents and scorpions. You're coming through everything that can try to, to just direct you in a different direction and hinder you in your journey. It's out there. It's out there on the television. It's out there on your cell phone. You can get more trouble on a cell phone today than we used to could in this part of the country if we wanted to, you couldn't have done it. <coughs> but the cell phone will take you into the darkest areas of our society. That's right. And it'll destroy the mind of our young people and even older people. We're not exempt. What do you know about a cell phone, preacher? I know how to make a call and take a call. And I've got a real good camera on it, or I'd throw them away. Hey, I never had a phone when I grew up on Green Hill. I got married, me and my wife didn't live in Tulsa, but I think we were married, she said, either eight or nine years before I ever let her get a telephone in Tulsa. She kept saying, well, I'm gonna get us a telephone. I said, for what? I don't know why I wanna call somebody. I said, if you wanna talk to him, we'll go see him. I'm still living on Red Hill. Who needs a telephone? I've got a car that'll make it over. <laughs> he said he was a car to do it with. In some areas like this, I was. Amen. God is showing us how he brought those who would keep his word. Those who would look to, to Moses and to Joshua and the others, Aaron. As they made their journey through the desert, headed for heaven, headed for promise, <laughs> we're headed for heaven. So God did that, and it was it, it, it was unbelievable how God took them. Now, I was going to go back, and I, I want to show you this. I want to show you because I knew that I'm going to be over here where I'm going to be to do this. When they left the land of Egypt, they didn't even get to the red, to the Red Sea before they had God's presence. That was the second person the Godhead, which is called Jesus, in the cloud. He went with them out of Egypt, uh, out of uh, out of uh, Egypt. Before they got to the Red Sea, they had an enemy behind them, and the cloud would get behind Israel and stand between God's people and the Egyptians. And at night. He would go over and he would be a fire. And he led them for 40 years. You know, I read that verse of scripture to you. How that until the 40 years was over, he was there. After they had built the tabernacle, he would settle on the tabernacle when they would settle. And then when he would lift up, they would fold that tabernacle up and they would take off and fall on the cloud. He followed them for 40 years. Well, Guess what? Manna. God started feeding them right after they got across the Red Sea with manna. 
And, and, and actually, I like what it says over here. I'm just going to read this right quick, and I won't, I won't keep you long. But over here, it tells us that when they got across on the other side, uh, let's see if I can find the chapter right quick. It's, yeah, it's in chapter 16. They were crying around, and so God told Moses that he would, he would give them flesh and even. He would send in quail. And in the morning, he would give them manna. Uh, we give them bread. He didn't say manna. It says bread. Uh, and in the morning, bread to the full. And the Bible tells us on down there in verse number 12, he said, uh, and she said, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, in the morning ye shall eat, or ye shall be filled with bread. Well, it came. And, and I don't want to read all of this. But it, it, verse 14 tells you what it looked like. Uh, there would lay on the, a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And the children of Israel, in verse 15, saw it, and they said one to another, This is, it is manna. It is manna. So they named it. God said it was his bread. They named it manna. For they wist not what it was. They didn't want to go outside. They called it manna. And the Bible said, and Moses said unto them, This is bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. But all the way through the rest of that journey, four years of worse, they called it manna. Well, the manna is getting ready to be diminished. Amen. It's, it's getting ready to be gone. But I, I want you to look at that. Why did God do all of that? He did that in the desert and all. And I know I, I missed 14 in there in chapter 8, verse 14. He said, Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forgettest the Lord thy God, who brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You know what? God, God wants us to forget our life of sin, our life in the world, our life that we live for. We uh, we start a new journey, folks, when we get saved. And I want you to turn over to the book of Joshua. And I want you to turn over to chapter number five. <clears throat> and I really intended to read a few verses prior to this because uh, they had come into the land uh, of Canaan. Look at Joshua chapter number three. And I want to read this for you. <clears throat> In Joshua chapter 3, verse 17, it says that the priest of that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm. Notice what it says there, on dry ground. Now they're crossing a river that's out of its banks. In the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. They had come into the land of Canaan. Now, let me ask you something. Was there any other place in their journey where they passed through a bunch of water on dry ground? Do you all remember? Do you remember the Red Sea? They came up to the Red Sea and they said, man, we are blocked in. And they started crying for the enemy is right behind us. But the cloud was between them. God sent in and moved the water. And as it moved, it dried. And all of those people out of Egypt passed through the Red Sea on dry ground. Nobody even got their sandals muddy or wet. And so when they left the wilderness after 40 years, they crossed a river, the Jordan River. If you'll go back and read that chapter, you'll find out it was out of banks. It was a Spring of the year, it was time when the water was really running. And the Bible tells us that the priest, in verse 15, says, And as they that bear the ark were un uh, come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priest that bear the ark were dipped into the brink of the water, for, the, for Jordan overflowed all his banks all the time of harvest. So it was a flood-staged river. So you drop them down to where I read, but when they got into the water, the water ceased and backed up 
the river and the other part ran down and this whole crowd crossed the river on dry ground. That's right. And, and if you go ahead and read all of that, it, 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 it's absolutely unbelievable. When they all got across, then they had to carry rocks out of the river and stack them up on this other bank over there. It, man, is a monument. So is it not yet on that? Yeah, he does a whole lot more for us than we ever realize. You know what? We're not watching. We're not watching the hand of God as he directs us through our wilderness as we're on our way to glory. But anyhow, I just want to pitch that in right quick because I'm going to, we're going to get through here. Back to chapter number five. <clears throat> the children of Israel was encamped. And the Bible says in verse number 10 of that chapter five. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the lamb on the barley after the Passover unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. In verse 12, notice what it says. And the manna ceased on the morrow after that they had eaten of the old corn and of the land, neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, and, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. <laughs> no more fry bread. <laughs> Amen. No more chapahaga. None of that stuff in heaven. We're going to eat of the fruit of the trees that grow on either side of the river. Amen. They are fruitful all 12 months of the year. Amen. Praise God. That's what they did. Listen, I don't know about you, but I, I as I started preaching, I got, got my brain refreshed. And I said, man, their journey for 40 years is like our journey as a Christian as we're headed toward glory and one day we're going to cross over. There'll be no more of this food we're eating down here. We're going to eat real angel food. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalm 78 that the manna, the bread that fell from heaven was angel food that they got to eat. Ain't that something? They didn't enjoy it. They wanted it. From that whole meat back in Egypt. <laughs> they want them leeks and garlics and all that mess. I can read that to you. That's what they're crying for. Would to God that it just died in Egypt when we had the leeks and the garlics and the whole meat and all the children. There's a lot of people rather really dying sin so that they can feed that old flesh and they go to heaven when they die. That's sad. But that's the reason we keep preaching Jesus to them. That's, That's right. where we keep preaching. There's going to be a better way. There's a better life. There's a better life here. If you know Christ, man, God gives us something special in our journey. He gave them something special. He sent fresh quail in every evening. And all they had to do is gather them up, clean them. And I mean, I know some of y'all ate quail. Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But I mean, quail's good to eat. I've eaten them things. Amen. When I was on Red Hill, I could almost clean out a cubby with a 22. I mean, I'd slip up on them dudes. I was, I was shooting them. If you're shooting them in the head and they don't flip flop around, you can kill four or five of them before they finally get up and fly. And then you can watch where they're going and you can grab yours that you've got and you can be right over and get some more. Amen. I don't have a quail. I was have to be honest with you, I really enjoyed it. Squirrel. But I'm reading a squirrel up there. I'm going to read the angel. Amen. It's going to be glorious. Some people have never caught a glimpse of heaven. I might have to really preach on heaven one of the days. Really good. Listen, folks, we need, to, we need to get a longing for home. That's right. A longing for heaven. Amen. And know that the way to get there is to keep the word of God, walk with him, please him, and exalt his name and try to get everybody along the way you can to go with you. That's the reason we try to do outreach. That's the reason we tell people about Jesus and preach people to get saved by the grace of God. We want some people to go with us to heaven. I don't know about you. I, I mean, I, I mean, a lot of people I'd like to see go with me. Amen. I'm really good. Now, I want you to think about this. And I know I've kind of thrown this in way back yonder on the bread. But you remember over in John chapter number 6, verse 35? 
Jesus said, I am that bread. That's right. I am the bread of life. I am that bread that comes down from heaven. Let me pitch this in that quick. So, no manna, no quail, no nothing like they was given, no cloud. That cloud was with them for 40 years. Why? It was the presence of God with them in the person of the second person of the Trinity in heaven. <coughs> now let me throw this at you. You know who we'll have with us that are saved until we get ready to go across Jordan? Death, Jimmy Death. You know who's, what person is with us? God has to be with us? This is the third person. Who's the third person? The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. You remember, you remember the Bible tells us, and, and uh, I guess, well, you know what happened. Jesus told his disciples over here in, 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 in the book of Acts, chapter number one. They was getting ready. He, he gave them the, the directions of what to do. You go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, regardless of their creed, regardless of their color, regardless of where they live. Tell them about me to get them ready to get on their journey so they can make it to heaven and not go the wrong direction. So the Bible tells us that in chapter number one that Jesus told his disciples as he met with them in that 40 day period after his resurrection, he said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world, the earth. Why do we promote Christianity? Why do we need Christianity? We got it wrong. You ain't got enough to get you to heaven, honey. You've got to have God, and you've got to have Him through His Son. That's right. And I'll tell you, He followed them Jews through that desert for 40 years, and got them over into Canaan, and where they was in the promised land that God had promised to Abraham. And we've got a place that Jesus promised us. It's a place called heaven. Amen. The Bible tells us that. On that day of Pentecost, that great festival of the Jewish people, the Holy Spirit of God came, and the disciples were filled with the Spirit of God and spoke with other languages. And 3,000 people came there to worship in their old way, got into the new way, and went back to their places telling the people there, you need Jesus. That's how the first churches got started back in them days. So guess what? Well, I, think I got a little excited about this to believe that now we don't have a cloud. We, we're not fed with manna. We have Christ in the person of our God, in the person of the Holy Spirit. But we've got His Word. The Word is that manna. That Word is that food from heaven. And we've got to have it, church. That's the reason we keep meeting and worshiping and praising God and looking into His Word and understanding better what this thing is all about. Getting ready and praising Him in our song service and reaching out to a lost and dying world and letting them know that Jesus Christ died for their sin. We will never, if you, once you get saved, <clears throat> you'll be like them Jews for 40 years. You will never be out of there yourself. God the Father. Through God the Son was with them for 40 years. And you and I, never how long we live from the time we accept Christ until we die and go to heaven, regardless of the time limit, we won't be alone. We will have God with us in the person of the Holy Spirit. That's right. And the Bible says He will come in you and live within you and guide you in your Christian walk. And I'll tell you what. It's exciting to hear each other tonight. Amen. It's exciting knowing where we're headed and what we're going to get when we get there. Amen. A life eternity. My soul. <clears throat> Unbelievable. God is so good. He's better <clears throat> to his creation than they deserve. But you know what? He's loved them. And he created them in the beginning, male and female. To repopulate the earth. He said, You start out, and your offsprings will continue to.
populate the earth. And it's going to happen. So church, I'll tell you, I don't know about you, but I've I enjoyed going back. I've never preached a series on this. I've preached in different spots and different things on the time. I've never preached a series on I've been a good church. But I'll tell you what, I've enjoyed going back and refreshing my mind on it every night. What a joy to know that when we get saved, we begin a journey. And he's with us. And we will make the trip. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We'll go through trials. We'll go through suffering. We'll go through some things. But he doesn't humble us. Why? So that we will cast off pride and arrogancy and self and be obedient to our Heavenly Father. He wants us to know that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word out of his mouth. And he checks us out to make sure we'll be able to serve him. What about that? What a God we serve. What a God we serve. And to think about the fact, I'm glad <clears throat> that I not only have this book, but I've got his spirit living inside of me. That's right. And he's been with me for over 50 years. Over 50 years. Matter of fact, this December will be 51 years since I nailed on my knees and I cried out to Jesus to forgive me and save me. And I've never been alone since then. He's been back to work. Less than two years later, I'll call him preach. But I'll tell you one, I'll never forget the day, December 11, 1966, probably somewhere right around, I don't know. I can't remember what time we started service. The brother came through at 7 o'clock or 6 30, I don't remember. Probably about an hour and a half or so right after we started service. God spoke to my heart. He'd already been doing it. And he drew me to himself. And I received him as my Savior. It's in the 55 years ago. What a joy. Father, we want to bow in your presence tonight just to praise you and to thank you for how good you've been to us. You blessed me into your life that you gave me as two real young people. I call us a bunch of kids, really. We were just youngsters. But Lord, you matched me up with the one you want me to have, and we've been together. And, and we've walked with you. And I thank you for her, and I thank you for my salvation, and I thank you for life. And I thank you for this church, Lord, that has allowed me to come and be with them almost 11 years now, Lord fellowship with them, to walk with them, to love them, and to really get acquainted with the folks here in the Atlanta area. Lord, I want to thank you for that. I thank you for every good and every perfect thing you've blessed me with. Lord, you've been good to me. And I thank you for it. Father, bless this morning. If there's anybody here not saved, I pray they would get saved. If they're here and they're just kind of walking on the outside of the borders or something, they might come and say, I want I to get all the way in. I want you to have my life, Lord. I'm going to walk with you. Father, you bless the service in Jesus' name.